everybody, this is Franco. Not too long ago, I put a video out where I was explaining how to uh, set up your lathe tools in the Centroid Acorn CNC control software. And thanks for watching that video, and thank you for all your positive comments and your feedback. I did have a few people uh, make the request that I uh, put a video out explaining how to set up centerline tools, uh, drills, taps, screamers, those sorts of things. So, that's what this video is going to be about. I will do my best to keep it short and to the point. And uh, with that being said, let's just get right into it. In the description of this video, you'll see a link to the cheat sheet that I wrote for the other lathe tool setup video. I'll also put a hyperlink to, to that previous video. I recommend uh, that you check out that video, and I recommend that you check out all this information right here under Introduction and Getting Started. Before you go through the process of setting up your centerline tools, make sure you set your part Z0 and your part X0 using your master tool. And all of that is explained uh, in the other video. So I've already done that. I've already uh, set up my master tool and uh, dialed that in. <clears throat> so we're ready to move on. So flip the cheat sheet over. And on page three, there's two sections. There's set tool Z offsets, set tool X offsets. What we're going to do first is set tool X offsets. And the way that you do that for a centerline tool is you have to indicate the pocket. So I have, I've actually already done that for this, this pocket that I'm setting up. I'm going to go through the process anyway. Um, <clears throat> so you have to indicate the pocket uh, vertically, and you'll also have to indicate the pocket horizontally, right? So you have to get on center vertically, and you also have to get on center horizontally. So I'm cheating here a little bit. This uh, uh, Sherline CNC chucker that I'm using, I don't have to worry about being on center vertically because the way the machine is made, these tooling blocks come from the factory. They make sure that everything is in alignment. Uh, so that's kind of nice. So I don't have to worry about uh, that vertical alignment. All of these pockets, they're already vertically aligned. I only have to worry about horizontal alignment. But most people, especially if you are using uh, like a a drop-in tool holder like this, for instance. If you're using something like this, you're going to have to center the tool vertically, and then you're also going to have to center it horizontally. So, fortunately, the procedure for doing that is uh, pretty much the same. So, I think if you uh, understand what I'm doing here, you'll, you'll be okay. So, let me back up a little bit here. I'm actually going to undo what I just did. And let me jog. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you need to get your indicator mounted in your chuck. Um, I think the best way to do it is to put it in a collet or grab it with your vice jaws. That to me is the most stable. If you have a big enough machine, you might be able to use some kind of mag base holder. But uh, I believe that for most situations, the way I have this indicator set up right here, is probably the best way to do it. And you want to make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want it to have any um, any movement. Otherwise, that's going to mess up the process for you. So get it nice and secure. And then what you have to do is you have to eyeball, eyeball your uh, indicator with the pocket. And I'll try to I'll try to do this as best as I can without making anybody have motion sickness. My apologies. What you'll see here is, you know, my indicator is really close. Really close to being right where it needs to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully jog the, the tip of that indicator until it gets close to the, the bore. So what you want to do, you know, when you start out, you're not going to be anywhere near close, right? You need to like, 
you know, visually you have to keep keep adjusting. Uh, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you know you look at it and you're like, yeah, that that visually looks really close. I think I'm I think I'm close enough to take a measurement. So what I'm going to do is because I know my my pocket is centered vertically, I'm going to jog it in on the vertical and zero out right there. And let's just see if I can... All right, I'm going to zoom in on the ball first because I want you to see that. So just kind of watch how this works. So that ball, it just kind of uh, glide it right in. And now I already have this on center, so my indicator, it went right to zero. What you want, um, you need to have a little bit of pressure on the indicator. So let me back it out and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. All right. So as that ball enters the bore, the, I have the needle going around well, about one time. I feel really good about that. Now what you don't want to do is peg your indicator. You don't want to like push the needle so far that there's no travel. So what I always do is I tap it and I that way I can tell the needle's not pegged. I still have some travel left. So I know I'm getting an accurate reading. Now I'll, I'll sort of be, I'll go backwards. This pocket's already indicated in. So I, I can see that, that needle staying right at zero as it spins around. What you probably want to do is get yourself a, a mirror like the one I have right here. That way you can see the uh, back side of what you're doing. You can see I'm on zero all the way around. So I know the spindle is in center line with that pocket, but what I'm going to do just to sort of simulate this, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you're not on center. So I'm going to actually jog off center in my x-axis and let's see here. So right now I am one and a half thou away from where I, you know, center line. Watch what happens as the needle move or as I rotate. Now I'm headed back to the other side. You can see it's it's you know off the same amount on both sides pretty much. So what I need to do is because I know I'm on zero here, you know I can shoot for zero. Um, but basically, what you're what you're looking to do is to to get the same reading on both sides. Um, so here. You know, I'm below, I'm below zero. As I come around the other side, now I'm above zero. So what you want to do is just, you know, try to get it to the point where the indicator is in the same place, uh, you know, on both sides. So, uh, you know, what you're going to do, you're going to do this process first, probably in the, well, you could do horizontal first, you could do vertical first whatever you want, but the, the, the process is the same. And uh, you may have to do, you know, you may have to go back and forth. You may want to get vertical in as close as you can get it, then do horizontal, then go back, dial vertical in again, then, you know, take horizontal, get it perfect. But uh, the process is the same. So what I'm going to do is bring it back, bring it back to zero. And now you know, you can see it stays on zero the whole way around. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about indicating the pockets. Don't be, uh, don't get too frustrated if this seems really hard at first. If you've never done this before, this is a little bit of a, an acquired skill. But you, you know, it's definitely something if you're, if you're into machining, you know, you can do this. You're going to get it. Just be patient with yourself. Watch a few YouTube videos, that sort of thing. 
And, uh, you know, just be careful. You don't want to smash your indicator. Um, you know, just pay attention to what you're doing and you'll be fine. All right, so now that pocket is at zero. I am looking really good. I now know that pocket is on the center line of my spindle. So now we're ready to go back to the cheat sheet. So I'm on page three of the cheat sheet. The first thing I'm going to do is set tool X offset because we just dialed the X off uh, X axis uh, to be on zero. So step number one says zero out the X offset for the tool to be measured. And then step number two says zero out the tool wear. And I'm going to do that right now. So we'll come up here to set up tool offset. I'm doing tool five. I've already got X zeroed out. If there was a value there, I would put a zero in. Then I'm going to come down here to tool wear and make sure that tool five is zeroed out. Perfect. If you made changes, make sure you press save. Save. All right, great. Now, step three, now it, it says take a skim cut. And then step four says measure the diameter, right? So we don't need to do that. We've indicated it. Our, our, our skim cut, if you will, is zero. We've put that center line of that pocket right on the center line of the spindle. So instead of taking a skim cut, we indicate it. And we know right now that tool or that tool pocket is at X zero. That's what we want to tell the Centroid software that where this thing is sitting right now is X zero. That's the position you want to put the drill when you go to, you know, drill a hole or your tap or whatever. You want to be at X zero. So step three, step four, we can skip right here over, over here to step five. Open the tool geometry offset library. So that's set up tool offset. Go here, set up tool offset. And then it says set the X measurement diameter. Make sure the X offset column is highlighted. Press F1 X diam. Enter the measured diameter, which we're, is for us is zero. And then press F10 save. Okay, so let's do that. So here we are. Let's highlight the x-axis column, just like it says. Make sure the x-offset column is highlighted. Press F1, x diam. And then it says enter the measured diameter. Well, our measured diameter is zero. And you can see now it says that, zero. Now, um, we saved it. Now it says, step number seven, measure the X offset. Highlight the X offset register for the tool to be measured. F2 measure tool, F5 measure offset X, F10 measure here. So here we are. We're on our X offset. We're going to press F tool, F2 measure tool. And we're gonna press F5, measure X offset. And then we're going to press F10 to measure here. And what it did is it threw a value in 11.7825 for the X offset. And what that is, that is the distance from the tip of the reference tool to the center line of the drill that we just measured. That's what this graphic graphic right here is showing you. So we uh, we measure this you know this distance relative to the reference tool, and that is the value uh, when when the Centroid software calls up your tool. That's the value that's going to put the tool right on the center line. Now uh, we definitely want to be sure to press F10 save before exiting the screen. All right, perfect. So. What I'm going to do right now is just what it says. It says carefully jog the tool to a safe position away from the part. I am going to jog in the Z axis because I, I want to show you something. So Z axis and I'm going to get my 
pocket away from my indicator. So right now, you know, we're still at that same X value where, uh, you know, where we indicate it. And I am going to activate tool 5. So I'm going to go and, and pay attention to the screen. I'm going to go MDI T0505. Cycle start. Boom. Now, tool 5 is activated and it, it's showing that it's sitting at X0, which is exactly where we want it to be because we, we didn't move it. Okay, so that's how you set up your X offset. Um, pretty much the, the Z offset is just like what's shown in the other video. And you're going to follow these directions that are right here and you, and you, can, you can watch the other video and just you know, use the same technique. What you're going to do is you're going to go back to page two of the cheat sheet and you'll have to take your indicator out of the spindle. You'll put your bar stock back in the spindle, right? You'll put your bar stock back in the spindle, and then you're going to come over here, and you're going to follow the procedure, set part Z0. You're going to do all that. Then you're going to flip back over to page 3, and you're going to follow the procedure, set tool Z offset. And uh, that's it. You're going to do that just as it was shown in the other video that I will uh, hyperlink to in the description of this video. All right, well, I think that's enough information on that right now, so I'm going to stop it there. Uh, I hope this is helpful. And, um, you know, once again, thanks for watching these videos. Please be safe and uh, have a good time.